All right, guys, we have one more thing to look at <clears throat> in the menu, and then we'll finally be able to get into the action, which unfortunately is going to have to happen in the next episode. I'm sorry. I know it's taken a long time, but I hope you guys are finding this tutorial useful and are learning um, about, about this wonder wonderful game. Okay, let's look at the very last thing in the menu, and that is the um, control panel. So, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> in order to do this, what I'm going to do is... <coughs> I got something in my throat. The control panel basically allows you to get into the control panel <coughs> of man, excuse me. Here, let me let me take a drink of water here. It allows you to get into the control panel of a vessel or a base that you that you own. <coughs> so maybe the best way for us to do this is how about if we do this? I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to run a command called um, SBP, which is short for sp uh, Spawn <clears throat> Blueprint. And this will allow me to spawn any blueprint in just automatically. So it's it's massively cheaty, but it's an admin thing. Anyway, also, let's go ahead and turn this back to daytime, too. Now, these, co this, these commands, these little cheats that I'm doing, you guys will not be able to do that on a multiplayer server, unless, of course, you've been made an admin on that server. But you can do them in your single-player game. Guys, when you play this game for real, don't cheat, though. You're, you're going to spoil, spoil the fun of it. Play legit. That's the only way to do it. Anyway, okay, so let's get on a semi-level spot here. This this should be good. All right, we're going to go back into our blueprints menu. We're going to click on bases. And I'm going to... Um, <clears throat> let's spawn in my Sky Needle. This, now, this... <laughs> This is a huge base that I built in, like, way back in Alpha... I don't, I don't even remember. I think it was Alpha 3 that I built this base in. Uh, it has been <clears throat> updated for... I think it was updated in Alpha 7 or 8. Uh, but I haven't really checked it to see if it's updated in... Um, in Alpha... Uh, for Alpha 12 yet. Just haven't gotten that far. Anyway, we're, we're, not, we're not really concerned about the actual base itself at this point. However, just a, a quick word about this. Um, I'm actually from Washington State and was born uh, in near Seattle. And, you know, one of the landmarks, of course, of Seattle, Washington is the, is the Space Needle. And so, you know, this, this, the Space Needle inspired my build here of the Sky Needle. Anyway, enough about that. Let's look at, look at this. So um, because I own this base, what I can do now is I can, I can get r close to the base or if I'm inside the base, um, I can bring up the control panel. Now, I can do that quickly by pressing P um, or, right, or I can just press tab and then click this little thing here. And this brings up the control panel of my base. If I'm not near my base, if I'm off somewhere else, um, I can go into the registry and find my base and get to the control panel from here. Remember we talked about that earlier? Uh, very useful if you need to check anything about your base and you're not actually at your base. Okay. So let's take a look at the at the control panel. Uh, really important stuff in here. So I'm going to try and go through this fairly quickly because I because I want to actually get into the action in the in the next episode. Um, so <clears throat> main tab main tab tells you the name of the vessel or the base, and of course you can change it if you want to. Uh, faction you can either set a faction to uh, or an item a vessel a base whatever to private or to faction. You used to be able to set stuff to public, but Elyon removed that. We can no longer do that in the game, which kind of sucks in some situations. Because let's say, for example, I'm playing on a multiplayer server with some friends of mine. And some of those friends are actually in a different faction than mine. But we want to all go, you know, raid a Xerox POI together. Well, what we used to be able to do is take our capital vessel and set it to public. So that my friends, even though they're not in my faction, remember factions like your guild, right? Um, they could still, you know, go on my ship and sit down on the ship and and travel with me to that POI. But now that we can't do that, we really only have two options, and it really does suck because private means only me, only I have access to this base, and faction means only people who are in my faction can do it. Now, I, I believe that there is somewhat of a workaround for that if you have factions that are, excuse me, that are also in alliance 
but I don't know exactly how all that works, so I don't really want to speak to it in, uh, other than to say that I think there is potentially a workaround for that through alliances, but I don't want to get into that right now. Anyway, um, so main tab, info, basic info about my base. This tells me how much energy it's using, how, you know, what its mass is, in this case in kilotons. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's not so much important for bases, but it would be important for, say, like a small vessel that I wanted to maybe dock on a capital vessel. I need to know, you know, how much weight it's going to add, which can then potentially affect performance, you know, of the vessel. Um, so what it's outputting, what it's consuming, how much power is left, whether or not it is CPU efficient. Now, this is miles above the limit. And the reason for that is because remember, I built this a long, long time ago, like three or four years ago. And back then we didn't have CPU. So, um, I don't even know if it's possible to get this base uh, high enough. Oh yeah, it would be possible. So if, if we actually converted the base to a tier four base, we would have enough CPU um, to, to use it as is, but we'd have to go all the way to tier four to do that. Okay. Um, so anyway, we'll get, we'll get back to that in a second. So that, yeah, basically it just shows me real basic information. I can set this as my home spawn. You have to have either a clone chamber or a medical bay in your base to use this whether or not i have offline protection enabled whether or not um, i've used a land claim device do we why am i having a brain fart about land claim devices in this game we have the offline protection hmm i don't know i'm not sure how that applies to be honest with you uh, you know, I also play other survival games like Seven Days to Die, and of course in Seven Days to Die, <clears throat> you, you do have an actual LC block, a land claim block that you can put down, which then sets a perimeter around your base that protects it from other players and that sort of thing. Um, but in here, I'm either completely having a, a brain cramp or this no longer applies. I'm not sure. Anyway, sorry about that. Again, guys, if you know how that works in the comments, uh, do let us know. Um, this is just a real quick overall power indicator that the base is using. This shows me if I have a shield on. One of the things you can do uh, with a base and or a ship is you can put a shield generator on it, and this will let me know um, if, you know, if the shield's on and, and what percentage it is at. So if I'm under fire, you know, you'll see this go down uh, to the percentage. And then, of course, when it goes all the way down to zero, then, then your whole hull starts taking damage. Um, this tells me what kind of ammunition uh, the base has, and I can use these fill all buttons to fill ammunition, oxygen, fuel, or pin tax it um, by just you know having it in my inventory or being connected over the wireless to a container that has it, and then I can click fill all, and it'll just fill it for me. Or I can go directly into the fuel and then drag from my inventory over in here to do it manually if I want to do so. Okay. Um, and yeah, so this is your oxygen level, your fuel level, and your pentaxid level. A base uses pentaxid to fuel the shield. A ship uses pentaxid to both fuel the shield and as it's also used as warp fuel. Okay. Um, over here, I've got some basic switches. So this allows me to turn the power off and on. This allows me to turn the oxygen off and on, the shield off and on, the lights, the signals, that sort of thing. Um, and, and your turrets and whatnot. And if you if you have a ship, you'll have even more options here. So you 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 know one real common example of how this might be used is let's say that I've got a lot of lights on uh, on my base, right? And uh, I'm going to go away for a while, and I want to conserve power. So I might turn the lights off, just like you would in your house, right? Um, maybe I'm on a a single player game, and you know, I'm not at war with any factions at the moment, so I might want to turn my turrets and weapons off because all this stuff uses power. You know, it'll it'll all use power when it's turned on. Um, you know what we could do? Let's go into El Cheeto menu here, and let's just get some fusion cells, which is the highest grade fuel in the game. And then we're going to go here, and we're going to just do fill all, okay? Um, because I had that in my inventory, it just filled, filled the base. Let's also, while we're at it, Go in here and get some pentaxid. And we'll press P to get right into the uh, control menu, and we'll fill fill that too. Uh, it looks like... Oh, you know what? I don't have a pentaxid tank on this base because 
back when I built it, we didn't have shields either. Okay, well, nevertheless, if, if I if I had one on here, let's just use the chibi menu. Why not, right? Let's grab a pentaxid. Um, oh, that's not going to let me do that. Okay, here, let's just do that. I'm just going to pop this sucker down right here. <laughs> okay, now we have a pentaxid tank. You know what else we're going to need is we're going to need a shield generator too. So let's do, um, it's a, called a whole shield generator. We want a tier two for a base which is this one and let's just plop that down uh somewhere there okay now if we go into here we should be able to fill this up and we should be able to turn our shield on and now you, you'll start to see the shield um uh, go up here okay um Except for we're not. You know why? Because I'm way the hell over the CPU limit. Okay, well, you know what? Just try, take my word at word for it for now. If we had enough CPU, um, this would start to fill up and you would see the shield uh, filling up right there. We can't even power this base up. It is so far beyond the limit that... All right, I'll capitulate. We want a CPU uh, for capital vessel, and we want T4s. And I'm just going to put them wherever I can stick them for now, just so we can... Uh, why am I... Oh. This is going to get you guys every single time. It doesn't matter how experienced you are in this game. If your shields are on, you can't place any blocks on the base. Hmm. That actually didn't seem to be the issue, though, did it? Okay, there's some other reason why it's not letting me put the extenders down. I'm not going to try and troubleshoot that right now. Because, seriously, I want to get through these menus so in the next episode we can actually do stuff. So just bear with me. This is going to be a little bit longer episode. It is what it is. Um, Alright, so let's finish talking about the control panel. So, we, we talked about this. Now, um, these are switches and signals that you can set up. Uh, to do specific things. Um, I'm not going to actually do this. This is a little more advanced than I want to get into right now, but here's a quick example. Let's say that I have... Um, actually, here. I, I, I have an example I can actually show you for realsies. Let's go uh, spawn in um, my Swamp Cruiser. I just, I just built this uh, for our Let's Play. Um, so this is a hover vessel. Um, that I'm using on our swamp planet. Okay, so let's uh, hop inside for a minute and just f f uh, fuel it up. Do I not have any? Oh, let's go Prometheum. So we'll just grab some fuel packs there and we'll fill up so we have power. Okay, so um, on this vessel, I have uh, Gatling guns in the front, and I also have a, a, a minigun turret on the top, okay? The minigun turret is automatic, it will fire automatically without, without me uh, controlling it. Now, I can control it if I want to, but if I'm not in the turret, then it just uses its own uh, logic based upon instructions that I give it to fire on whatever I want it to fire on. There are times when I don't want the minigun turret to shoot something, I want to shoot it myself. An example of that on my Swamp Planet is, the Swamp Planet has these things called Swamp Golems. They're monsters, um, and they give you a lot of XP if you kill them yourself. The problem with my minigun turret is that if it kills something, I don't get the XP for it, okay? But there are situations where I want it to, to protect me, and so, you know, I, I don't get the XP, but it protects me, from, you know, uh, by, by doing its thing. But in the case of, you know, a Swamp Golem, I don't want the turret to kill it. I want to kill it myself with my Gatling guns, which I control myself. Okay, I got to load them up. And so, what I've done is I've used a, a custom switch here that will only turn off the minigun turret and not the Gatlings. So if I click the custom switch, see how my turret... Um, gets put away, but I still can use my Gatlings. That's important because if I used the main 
uh, switch for turrets, it accounts for all turrets and weapons. That turns off both my Gatling guns and my turret, and now I don't have any weapons at all. Right, so I've so you can use these custom switches here to to kind of fine tune different things that you want to turn on and off uh, on your vessel or in your base. I'm not going to get into how to do that in this tutorial. That's a little bit more advanced stuff. Uh, I just want you to understand, you know, what this stuff is. There's plenty of of YouTube videos available on uh, on YouTube. You know that you can, yeah, YouTube videos available on YouTube. You think? Uh, videos available that go, you know, goes through how to work with signals and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to you guys to look up later on because this is just a, a getting started tutorial. Okay, so that covers everything on the main tab. Devices shows us all of the devices on the vessel or the base that we happen to have. Um, so what you can do here is you can roll all these out and then I can see every single individual component that is on this hover vessel that I'm in. And it works the same way with the base and it works the same way with um, a capital vessel and, and it really anything. So from here, um, I can see and if need be access, if the device is accessible, a thruster is not something I can access. You can't open up a thruster or anything, but I can open up say a refrigerator. So if it's accessible, then you see this access button appear and then I can directly open up my refrigerator right from the control panel and put, you know, some meat. Maybe if I was hunting and I, I, I killed a critter and I had some meat, I can put it into the fridge right from the control panel. That means I don't have to physically actually open the, the fridge directly. I can just transfer stuff to it directly through the control panel. Okay. Another thing you can do is when you roll out all your devices here, uh, you can see if any of them are damaged. So if you've been in combat, um, I might, you know, I, I might have had some of my lights or some of my Gatling guns or something else, you know, got damaged. Um, let's see if we can quickly simulate that. So I'm going to go, uh, let's put this in defense mode. Can I damage, um, one of my Gatling guns? Uh, no, I can't. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to cover how to use the multi-tool and all the weapons and all that sort of thing in uh, in the next episode. So right now I'm just trying to demonstrate something. So let's just bring in an assault rifle and we'll bring in some um, a projectile rounds for that assault rifle. Okay, and then I'm going to damage my thruster. Okay, or my, I'm sorry, my Gatling gun. All right, now if I get into the P menu, um, and a look under devices, I should see that this Gatling gun is has sustained 9% damage. Okay, so really useful to see what is actually damaged after you've you know you've been in a battle, uh, so you know what's to repair. There, there's a couple of different ways. There's a few different ways you can repair stuff in the game. I'm not going to get into that now, but just know that that's how I could see. Oh, this was damaged. This was damaged, and this was damaged after that fight I just got in. So I know what to fix. Okay, let's see. So you can also, from the devices menu, you can rename them if you want to. Um, I don't, I don't usually rename things like engines um, unless it makes sense to do so. You know, it might. Um, what I often will rename though are weapons. So based upon you know where turrets are located. Uh, so uh, I have a base in my playthrough where I have four turrets on the roof, and I might want to know this is the northwest turret, this is the southwest turret, et cetera, et cetera. So you can rename that stuff from here if you want to. Um, you can enable or disable a specific individual device from this menu. So, you know, these buttons are, are more global. So this is all the lights in the base. You know, this is the, um, all the turrets in the base. This is all the thrusters on the ship, that sort of thing. Whereas in here, I might just want to disable maybe, you know, maybe one of my RCSs because it's using too much power, using too much CPU or something like that. That's not the best example, but the point being is that this is where I can actually enable or disable uh, individual devices. Okay. Um, also, if you have a build and you want to know where something is, like I might have forgotten, or maybe I'm not the one that built the ship, and I want to know where this RCS is because maybe it's damaged and I need to repair it, for example. I can click Show on HUD, and then it'll actually show me on the ship where that RCS is located, right? In this case, it's behind this block, so I'd have to remove this block first to get to it to repair it. But the point being, you can, you know, tell tell the game to show you where that is. 
There's a couple other things. You can create groups and then assign special switches to groups and a few other things here. You can uh, you can auto auto group. No, pay attention to this warning though because if you do this and you have created custom groups and switches and that sort of thing, this will wipe those out and you'll have to start over. So be really careful with auto group. Typically what you do is you build the device uh, or the ship or the base, you auto group it and then from there any other groups that you want to do you would do manually if you have you know custom switches, um, these things here. Okay. Signal logic allows me to use various different types of logic, um, if and or that sort of thing, uh, to create more uh, uh, more elaborate, you know, types of circuits and switches uh, to turn stuff off. So one place you might use this, for example, is you might have like a, a ramp and a door. Well, you can put a signal, uh, a detector rather, uh, like an infrared detector kind of idea. Uh, near the door, you can configure its range, and then you can say when something comes into range of this, then open the door. You know that's the basic idea behind it. Again, this is this is more complex than what we want to get into in this tutorial, but I just want you to have a basic idea of of, of what this stuff is. Okay, CPU statistics. This gives me information about the CPU usage uh, of the vase or the vessel. So right now, I can see that I'm at Tier 2. I have a total of 12,000 CPU allocation points, and I'm only currently using 5,786. So therefore, I'm at 100% efficiency. Um, if I go to statistics, okay, um, notice that the generator that I have on this hover vessel is current is, is capable of a maximum output of 700 power units. However, I actually have 734 power units. Where did that extra 34 come from? There's nothing generating it. Well, the reason I have that is the game is giving me an efficiency bonus because I'm at 100% efficiency here. So I have just a little bit more power uh, to play with if I need it. Um, than I than I would if I wasn't at a hundred percent efficiency Okay um, And then you know you can upgrade to the next tier the way you do that is you build these extenders and they are expensive They they become more and more expensive as you move up in the tiers and then you put these extenders on The vessel or the base and replace you know the other one to get to the next tier And then you have more points and therefore you can put more stuff you know on on the uh, the vessel and do more with it over here, this kind of this tells me basically what is utilizing the points. Um, it doesn't look like it's charging me for the blocks on the hull. Uh, oh, I know why it's not. It's not because my hull is entirely made up of extensions. That's why. <laughs> I was going to. Why, why isn't it doing that? Normally, um, your blocks, every block you put, will also cost you CPU. So generally, if it's just a basic you know, like steel block, uh, it'll cost you one point per block. If it's like a hardened steel block, it's like two or four. If it's combat steel, it's like eight per block. So it gets really expensive uh, in terms of CPU as you, as you, you know, go up. But anyway, this list is showing me exactly what is using um, CPU and how much it is using. So container extensions, I have a total of 70 extensions on here and all of those extensions together are using 1,050 CPU points. My RCSs, I have two, and they're between the two of them, they're using 700 and, you know, and whatnot. And, and it goes from highest to lowest. So my Gatling guns, as you can see, um, the three of those are using the most CPU out of everything else on this particular vessel. That's important to know because if you're, gonna, if you're building something uh, or modifying something, you, you, you need to be aware of how much CPU that particular component or device is going to use. Um, remember, we already talked about this. Don't You don't want to go over 100% because if, if you do, then your base or your vessel is going to not work at full capacity. And that could be dangerous if it is a situation where all your guns aren't firing, for example, when you think that they will. Um, or, you know, your engines aren't, uh, aren't going as fast enough when you're trying to outrun that Xerox battlecruiser, that sort of idea. Okay. Last tab statistics this gives you lots of different information about um, your 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 vessel or your device so general information um, you know the size the block count that sort of thing more specific information about the power that's being used pay attention to this um, there's two kinds of power that you can have on on a base um, you can have solar power and you can have actual you know fuel based power 
ships can only have fuel-based energy. So uh, I can add some capacitors and some solar panels, and then what that typically will do, excuse me, is it will it will reduce. It, it it depends it depends upon how you do it. If you put enough solar panels and you have good sunshine, and that does matter, by the way. Um, like out in space. Space is the best place to use solar power because you don't have any atmosphere, you know, cloud cover, that kind of thing affecting it. Um, you can set up a base that runs 100% on solar power, but usually the way that it works is the solar power just kind of supplements the fuel power. So right now I have a consumption of 161 power units uh, as it is right now. Pretend this was a base, by the way. I know we're looking at a, a hover vessel, but just to pretend it's a base for a second. Um, and so I have a total of five hours and 23 minutes of power left. Well, if I had some solar power supplementing the fuel power, um, then what that means is gonna, it's gonna use less fuel and therefore I have more time before the power runs out. Okay, so that's kind of the idea behind it. Uh, this gives me information about, you know, O2, uh, which is gonna be important for ships in space and space bases, space stations. Uh, how many ventilators, how many oxygen tanks, that sort of thing. Uh, this is basic defense information. Basically, how many guns uh, do you have, how many detectors, that sort of thing. Um, this basically show, uh, shows how what the resources were uh, to make this device and how long it took. So that was kind of like the factory information. Um, let's We'll do this overview thing last. Cargo production basically gives you information about how much storage you have and how many refrigerators, that sort of thing. Uh, thruster information basically gives you information about how much you know how many thrusters and rcs's you have for movement if it is a vessel as opposed to a base whether or not you have any passengers um which you know i mean you can have a really large capital vessel and you might want to know how many people are on it i'm not sure you know where that would actually be practical because usually you're going to know who's on your ship but maybe not i don't know maybe you've, you've been rated in pvp and you want to see if someone's on your ship i've never really used that but that's what it's for um, all right, last thing we're going to talk about, and then we're going to wrap up this very long episode. Apologize it's gone so long, but like I said, I wanted to get through all this so we can get into the action in the next episode. This is <clears throat> a really important information when you are building um, a, a vessel in particular, because what this does is this tells you how well it's going to perform. It might behoove us to... Let's go ahead and... Let's go to small vessels and let's bring in my tier four uh, J jet. Okay. So here, we'll just get right here. Okay, so I want to try and get in a spot where you can see the. Okay, that's good. Okay, so this this gives me a lot of very useful information about how my ship is going to perform so um what this is basically telling me is it, it's how well it's going to move and or rotate and or pivot or whatever in each direction because this is a small vessel you know it's going to move in all directions it's going to move up down forward backward and left and right uh, a hover vessel doesn't move up or down it just moves you know horizontally basically but a small vessel of course because it is an aircraft or a spacecraft um, it's going to move in all directions. So what this is telling me is it's telling me how many meters per second um, it's going to go in each direction. So this is the down thrust. So I have 36 meters per second down thrust. Um, this is the uh, up thrust. So I have 54 meters per second uh, on the on the up thrust. This is the acceleration, which is an insane 315 meters per second which is way, way faster than it really should be, but there's a reason for that. I'm not going to get into that right now. It has to do with the way the aero aerodynamics and thruster placement work in the game now, which is too advanced for this tutorial. Um, but it tells me how, you know, basically how fast it accelerates. Uh, these tell me how fast it'll strafe to the left and right. Uh, the yaw is how, how quickly it will turn. Okay, so basically just pivoting, turning left and right, as opposed to like banking. So in other words, your rudder control. Um, the pitch is, you know, up and down. So how well does the ship uh, dip up and down? Um, and then this is its, its back thrust or its rear thrust. It tells me how fast it can go. It has a maximum speed of 70 meters per second, which is the maximum speed for all small vessels 
uh, in Empyreon. That's a cap that the game itself, you know, puts on. However, you can exceed that a little bit with some boosters. Um, tells me basically how much thrust, how much cargo this ship is capable of lifting. That's really important to know, 410 tons. So if I'm going to use this to haul stuff, I need to make sure that it's going to be capable of hauling whatever mass I'm going to put into the ship itself. Um... Okay, so basically, yeah, that th those are important specs. And then if you go to torque detail, then it kind of gives you uh, more of just overall um, information about your your areas of direction. So your yaw, your pitch, and your roll. Um, if you want to see, you know, that more detailed type of information. Okay. Um, sometimes a ship might be a little bit, move a little too well. So the yaw on this ship is 73 degrees per second. That's... That's almost squirrely, I like to call it. Uh, it turns too well. In other words, it's too, it's overly sensitive. So if you are in a vessel that has uh, overly sensitive pitch, roll, or yaw, you can actually tone that down here with these little switches here. So if I wanted to tone the yaw down, notice that I can, um, I can adjust it. See how it's updating here on the degrees by using this little slider. So that's kind of a nice little feature if, you know, if, if things are a little bit more than they should be. And 73 degrees is, it's on the border for me. Um, you know, these these settings that you can do here, um, one question that a lot of people have is, well, what should I set it to? Well, it, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say exactly what you should set your, your um, you know, your directions, your thrust and that sort of thing to, because it depends upon, you know, what you like. Uh, some people want might want more yaw than others, for example. It depends upon the type of vessel. Are we talking about a big-ass capital vessel or a very small, agile, small vessel? Um, and it depends upon how much CPU you have to play with on the ship. You know, how much room you have here to add more thrusters, for example. So it's kind of hard to tell. But, you know, for small vessels, a kind of a very, very general rule of thumb uh, based upon my preference, and other people will probably disagree with me, and that is perfectly fine, but on my preference, I don't like this these numbers to be below 40, okay? And right now, the, um, you know, my strafe is at 38. Down thrust is not so bad. Uh, 36 down thrust is, is actually pretty good. I don't have a problem with that, but I would like, I actually would like the strafe on this ship to be a little higher than it is. I can compensate for that a little bit by using my boosters when I am strafing, so it's not a big deal to me, but I would prefer this to be more up in the 40s, mid-40s, approaching 50. <clears throat> um, but 55 degrees of pitch is great. 73 degrees of yaw is almost too good. Um, 53 degrees of roll is just about perfect. So, you know, 45, 50, 55-ish around in there are really pretty good numbers for a small vessel. But the best thing that I can tell you is when you, if and when you start to get into building ships in this game is just experiment pay attention to what the numbers are saying and if it's not enough then make adjustments until you get it to where you want it to be to where it's comfortable for the way that you fly your ship how do you do that that's too complicated for this beginning tutorial the very very short version is that th these numbers are affected by the type of thrusters that you use and where more importantly almost where you position them on the vessel um, but I'm not going to get into that right here. That's, that's too complicated. That's out of the scope of this particular tutorial. There is a gentleman that, um, all of us know and love in the Imperial community. His name is Jeff Randall or Jay Randall. And he is, you know, he is like the, a wizard when it comes to building in this game. And he's got a lot of videos on YouTube, tutorials on how to do stuff, uh, how to build ships. And uh, if, if you if you really want to get into building in this game, I highly recommend that you watch some of his content and he'll really help you become a good builder in this game. He's helped me out, you know, with some things that I've watched him do. All right, guys, that is it. Oh, my God, that took a long time. It took us. Well, if you can if you consider the length of this episode, I might have to make this a two part episode. Um, it's taken us essentially four episodes just to get through the doggone menus in this game. But I'll tell you what, I hope that. If you're watching this and you're continuing to watch this, I hope that you stuck around for the whole thing and that you learned um, in detail um, the things that you need to know about starting in this wonderful game. And we're not done yet. We're going to actually go do some stuff next. We're going to do some action. Um, I'm going to show you how to mine and, and how to make food, that sort of thing, how to explore 
Uh, so we're not done yet, but it just took us, it took us four episodes just to get through the menus, but I hope you guys found that really useful um, uh, about how the game works. And, you know, if you can get your head around e even half of the stuff that I've gone through so far, you're going to do really well in this game. And the rest of it will come, you know, as you go along. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, doesn't take any effort, and it certainly will help uh, the channel grow. Uh, if you didn't like what you see, please consider leaving me a constructive comment uh, and help me improve, okay? Um, that's it. Have a good one. In the next episode, we're going to actually do some stuff. Bye-bye.